Alice Chapter 9 Lesson 2 The Guessing Game For this game we're going to be using variables and while loop and an if statement to have the user guess a number generated by the computer. You've all played the guessing game. Somebody chooses a number and the other person has to guess it. You're told to guess higher or lower until you finally guess the number or until you run out of guesses. For this game you will play against the computer. So the computer will pick the random number and you will have to guess it. The computer will give you hints as to guessing higher or lower until you guess the number. You can keep track of the number of guesses it takes and for an additional challenge you can display that number and add a counter and give them a certain number of tries so they can win or lose. You're going to start this program from scratch. You get to pick your own template, what kind of background that you want, what kind of animal that you want, and you can even add some text that says guessing game. So when you're ready, you're going to get into Alice and set up your own scene. Then we're going to be creating two procedures, one for yes and one for no. We've done this before for other programs, uh, such as when you clicked on the shapes or that you did the, voc the typing program or with the vocabulary where you had to pick the right word. We had a yes and a no. And also it's just very similar to when we were going to walk forward or fall in. So that, it's that kind of thing. So for our object, whatever it is, two procedures, one for yes and one for no. So you guessed the right number or you didn't. And our procedures might look something like this. Now you don't have to have it just this way. I have the, the object moving up and down and saying yay uh, or shaking their heads. But you can really do whatever you want. So your code does not have to look like this. Let's go ahead and get started in Alice and get through this part of the program. In Alice, I've already set up my scene. I've used just a desert scene with a coyote here. I've added some text, guessing game. I just added a few cactus for some variety to make it a little more interesting. You're really free to use whatever you want. So mine's going to be a biped. I will do some procedures in the biped level, and you'll just do it for whatever you have. I'm going to select my coyote here, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do a quadruped procedure for yes and a quadruped procedure for no. So this is going to be the yes, like I guessed the number. What do I want the coyote to do? Well, I might want him to jump up and down or spin or just, you know, make some kind of a ruckus in general and also say something. I'm going to have him do it at the same time. So he's going to say something and move, uh, but you're free to do whatever you want here. So you can follow my instructions or you can just turn off the video and do your own thing. So I'm going to have him say, uh, congratulations, you guessed my number. Okay. And as he's doing this, he's going to uh, jump up and down. So I'm going to have a do in order. To have him move up. And I'll just do a little jump and have him move down. And then I might have him spin right after that. Just a quick turn all the way around. And I'm going to adjust my numbers because I don't want this to take a really long time. So my up and down is going to be half a second. So this whole thing will take one second. And then I'll have him turn really quickly and I'll have him do half a second as well. So it's just a really quick yes, something to happen if you do guess the number. Let's also do a no. And I'm going to have him say something again. It's like no. So we're going to use the text here. I'm going to um, leave a little bit of a message here. I'm going to actually have him say higher or lower in just a second, but I also want him to like maybe shake his head or maybe just turn around. Something kind of simple. If he is going to move it, shake his head, I have to find the head. So I've got neck right here. And I'm going to have him turn just a little bit. So I'm going to have him turn left like this much. 
maybe a quarter turn, and then he's going to turn to the right, a half, and then back to the left, a quarter turn again. That will leap him back where he started. And I want this to happen really quickly, so my duration is going to be 0.25. This is going to be a half a second because he's going, and then a 0.25. And if I want them to do this in order and then say at the same time, I'm just going to drag up all my tiles. And then I do it together so he'll talk and shake his head at the same time. I don't want to drag this out forever. Now I do want to say if you're going to go higher or lower. So I'm going to use a parameter for that. So when I call the no procedure, I will pass in higher or lower. This parameter is a text string. So let's go ahead and make it a text string. And what I'm going to be saying is, you know, guess higher or guess lower. So we'll, we'll just call this um, way to guess. Do I want to guess higher or lower? You can name it whatever you want, but something descriptive is really good. I want to include this in my string. No, you need to guess. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do a plus. No, you need to guess, and then I want to add way to guess. I want to make sure, and I need to guess, that I have a space. So I should be careful about that, otherwise it's all going to kind of like mush together. So I'm going to make sure that I put a space after the word guess. All right, then it won't mush together. So I've got my yes, and I've got my no. That's most of the work right there. Everything else is going to happen in my first method. Oh, and one more thing we can do, so I've clicked on my first method, is we can add an intro. And if I want that coyote to say it, I could also do this as a quadruped. So let's just add an intro where he's going to say what to do. And it just might be a couple lines of code. So my coyote is going to say, welcome to my game. You will guess my number. And then I'm going to have him say how big. So if you, you need to know what your range is, you're going to do 1 to 20, 1 to 50, 1 to 10. Um, I picked a number between 1 and 20. Can you guess it? So it's just a couple lines of code. And your instructions can be whatever you want. If you feel like you need to increase the duration because people might read a little bit slower, you can. Be careful. You don't want this to drag on forever. But we've got a nice little intro. So now in my first method, uh, we are going to have variables in just a second, but I can click on my coyote and I can do the intro. Now I definitely need two variables. One of them is going to be the random number that the coyote picks. One of them is going to be the guess that you as the player. Both of these are whole numbers, integers, because that's the kind of numbers that we're going to be playing with. So I'm going to come to my variable. I've already got a variable section. If you don't have one yet, you'll want to add a variable section comment and a main program section comment. Let's drag up a variable tile, and I'm going to pick a whole number, and this is going to be my random number. And I'll just start it at zero. It's always a safe thing to do. And my other one is going to be my guess. This is also a whole number. And I'll also start it at 0. And I'm going to have the computer pick a random number for this one. And I'm going to get a value from the user for this one. I've got my intro. I want to go through this process. So I'm going to get my random number. This is my assign. I'm dragging up the tile. I'm going to assign to random number. And first I just pick a number, that's my placeholder, then I can come here to random. And I'm going to use um, from A to B, because I'm not going to use 0. Most people are not going to pick 0. I'm going to do 1, and then a custom whole number to 20. So it tells me here up to, but excluding. Now if it's excluding 20, then I need to go to 21 so that it will actually get up to 20. So now I'm going to have a number between 1 and 20. And then I want to ask the user for a number. Right now the, the guess is 0. That's my initial. 
and so I can um, ask the user for a number and then we're going to see if it's right. I can go ahead and start this in a loop. My condition is always going to be true. Now while the number isn't guessed, I want to keep going in here. So we're going to just kind of work with this. I want a not true because I want to do it while it's not being guessed. I'm going to click on this. And now from my not true, I'm going to be comparing two whole numbers. So let's come down here to whole number. And I'm going to do equals equals. I have my random number. And I have my guess. So I'm going to compare the random number to the guess. If they're not equal, then I want to ask again. If they are equal, then I want to say win. So I can come over here to my yes. I've guessed the number. Basically, I've won. Now, if I haven't guessed the number, what do I want to happen? Well, I'm going to have to do my message, my no. Okay. And I need to say which way. Because now I've got the guess, but hmm. I need something here. So before I can do this line of code, I'm going to need another variable for if it's higher or lower. Now that's a text. So I'm going to come here and get another variable. And this one is going to be my text string. And I'm just going to start it with hello. It doesn't really matter because we're going to change it. And I needed something for this. So let's just call this um, guess direction. So I'm going to guess higher or lower. So if it's not equal, I'm going to come into here into my loop, and I want to compare the random number to my guess. If the random number is higher, I need to say guess higher. So that's going to be an if statement. Let's come right on here, pick true. So if, and now I'm comparing two whole numbers again, and I want to know greater. So if random number is greater than guess, see what we've got right here? random number is greater than guess, then I want to say higher. So I've got my text string. I'm going to assign it the value. So I've got my text string, which is guess direction, and I want to assign it a custom string, which is going to be higher. Now if it's not greater than, I want it to guess lower. So I'm going to do another assign statement, this time with guess direction. My custom string will be lower. So you see how we could use an if statement to help us know higher or lower. And I'm only going to come here if they're not equal. Now once I've got this assigned, guess direction, higher or lower, now I'm ready to call no. I'm going to do this right under the if but inside the loop. And I'm going to use guess direction. So see how the while loop, everything is inside here, my if statement and my call to no. And my parameter. My, my argument going to the parameter is going to be guess direction. So when I come here, guess direction is going to get passed into way to guess, and it will tell me higher or lower. That's pretty much the game right there. So we've got our three variables, our intro, we've got a random number, we're just going to keep guessing. Now the one thing I didn't do in here, you might be saying, well what about guess? I need to get one, don't I? And I'm going to ask the user for a guess. I'm going to do that right after I get the random number. I want my guess. And I'm going to pick just any number right now. Then I can come over to my functions. And I want to get an integer from the user. And it's going to come right here where my guess is. I'm going to need some kind of a prompt, like, you know, guess your number. What is your guess? Something like that. So I'm going to ask for the number and I'm going to compare to see if they're the same. Now I need to ask for the number again inside the loop. If I don't ask for the number inside the loop, it's going to be an infinite loop. It's never going to end. So you have to make sure that one of these two parts of the condition changes. The random number is not going to change, so my guess better change. So I want to basically just duplicate this line of code. I'm going to put it here inside my loop. It will be the last part of my loop. 
Now just be careful with your code. Make sure that when you copied your guess right here, that you have it right before your loop and you have it right after your loop. So everything's kind of nice and concise. You don't have a lot of extra things going on. It's fairly easy and simple to read and understand what's going on. Let's just try playing it again. And so my guess is going to be 10. Now it says lower, so let's go 5. And I guess the number. All right, great. Now if you've got to this point and you still have some time, if it's taking you less than two class periods to do this, then you're going to want to do the, some modifications. Let's add more to this program before you turn it in. So there'll be a second video lecture that will help you go through some modifications that you can do to add to your program.